Um, so in this problem I say, all right, here's your polynomial equation, and they say x equals zero, all right, and they want you to use, pop, um, use synthetic division to find all the remaining zeros, all right? So therefore, we know that x equals two, and that is what we're gonna call a what of a function? It would be a? It would, we're gonna divide it into that. Yeah, right, it's gonna be your device test, we're gonna divide it to, and we also call it the zero. Right? Now, this is an equation, so we'd be calling it either our root or our solution. But of a function, we'd be calling it our zero. So we need to find the remaining zeros. So to apply synthetic division, we know this is our zero. So remember, we have our zero on the outside. Then we take our coefficients, one. And now we notice, now here's an example where we do not have an x squared. So if we were to look at this, to rewrite it, I could write x squared plus zero x squared minus seven x plus six. All right, when we're applying synthetic division, you have to make sure you go in descending order. Notice how the exponents, three, two, one, x to the zero, right? See how they go? You have to make sure you have every single one of those terms. X to the zero is obviously one, so that's why we don't write it in there. We usually don't write the one up there. Does everybody see though? That's a very, very important point to remember. So we'd have one, zero, negative seven, and six. What am I doing? This is the problem I gave you guys last class for Whatever, I guess I'll, okay. So, you guys can uh, check your own homework list for today, okay? So now, the first term is you bring down the one. One times two is two. Zero plus two is two. Remember, you add vertically, multiply across. Two times two is four. Negative seven plus four is negative three. Negative three plus two is a negative six. Six plus negative six is zero, all right? So that's our resultant, uh, polynomial here, so remember this is our remainder, constant, quadratic, our linear, and then quadratic. So to write our quotient polynomial, what we have is x squared plus 2x minus 3. Now remember to think about this as our division algorithm, right? This times our divisor, right, is going to equal our polynomial, right? You guys remember that? Remember the 15 divided by 4, right? Or let's even, you know, 12 divided by 3. 12 divided by 3 is 4. 3 times 4 equals 12. Here is your quotient. Your quotient times your divisor gives you your polynomial. So if x minus 2 is my 0, that means x minus 2 is 0 is my factor, right? x minus 2 is my factor. Therefore, I can say that x minus 2 times x squared plus 2x minus 3, that equals my function, right? And this is my, this is my function as an equation because I set it equal to 0. But what we're trying to do is we're not trying to determine the function. We already know the function. We're trying to find the zeros. Well, ladies and gentlemen, once we have the zeros, I have this as a product. We know that x minus 2 equals 0. Well, that gave us x equals 2. But now we can write x squared plus 2x minus 3 equals 0. Okay. Here, right. Now, I need this equals 0. Well, this is like some of the problems I've been giving you, right? Yes? So what do we need to do in this point to solve? Factor. Right? We need to factor this one. So if I factor this out, I have, um, this would be x plus 3 times x uh, minus 1 equals zero. Therefore, now I can apply zero prime property again. And I have x equals negative three and x equals positive one. So therefore, all of the zeros, you can either just write them all together or you can write them as one solution set. So the zeros of this polynomial are two, negative three, and one. Okay. That should be in your answer for that problem. Now, there's two different things I need you guys to do. So that's how you guys go ahead and apply that. Um, one thing I want you guys to 